The Fellowship of the Ring has always been my favorite of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. I can still remember going to the theater and seeing it with my family on Christmas Day, and it always sparks a special feeling of nostalgia. There were a few effects from this movie that I was particularly drawn to, and as I started to get into video editing, I started to think that I might be able to recreate those in my own way. So for this video, I finally decided to challenge myself and see if I can actually recreate my favorite effects from The Fellowship of the Ring. And the first one I wanted to tackle was that iconic Bilbo jump scare when they're both in Rivendell. It's a really quick clip, but essentially I have to be able to figure out how to get a normal looking face to look like that. So the first thing I did was film myself acting out the scene, trying to get my face similar to scary Bilbo's. I first figured I could recreate this effect when I was doing this tutorial from Video Copilot years ago. Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here. So if you're looking for a more detailed walkthrough of a similar kind of effect, I'll put the link to Video Copilot's tutorial in the description of this video. But this will be a pretty good walkthrough of this specific effect. So the first thing I do when I bring this footage into After Effects is I put a marker on the frame that I think represents the scariest part of my face, similar to Bilbo's. Then I open up Mocha AE to do the tracking work. First, make sure you have perspective checked, and then I'm going to start by tracking my eyes. I'm going to draw a spline around my left eye and then track it forwards and backwards. Before I close out, I'm going to expand the planar grid by hitting this button, and then we're good to go back into After Effects. Now at the marker, I'm going to duplicate the footage. I'm going to call it left eye. Then I'm going to draw a mask around the eye and give it a little bit of feathering. Then I'm going to freeze frame from the hero image, and then I'm going to export the tracking data onto this layer. I'm going to set the opacity so that this fades in after a few frames. Now I'm free to use the Lumetri color on this layer to change the look of the skin around the eye. I'm going to make it darker and a little bit less saturated, just as an example. Now you can see that it's actually affecting the eye, not just the skin around the eye, so we will draw a little mask on the actual eye, and then we're just going to hit subtract and give it a little feather. And now zooming out, you can see that just the skin around it is affected by that Lumetri color. Now the next thing we want to do is add some texture. So to do that, we're going to add a black solid and then add a fractal noise effect. Then we can drop the opacity on this layer and draw a similar mask around that eye area. From here, we can play around with the settings of the fractal noise to get a nice contrasty shape that we can now use as a luma mat for the left eye layer. Now you can see that we have this really cool discolored texture around my eye that we can play around with using the settings from the fractal noise. Oh, and don't forget you need to export the tracking data onto this texture layer as well. And that's really the basis for this kind of technique, and now you're free to apply that to the other eye. So I'll now show you the After Effects file a little further along and some of the other techniques that I used. Here we are in the After Effects file, and what I first want to focus on is the actual eye. If you look at Bilbo's eyes, they become very light with almost an unnatural pupil in them. So what I did is I just drew out a light blue sphere, I put an unnatural shaped pupil, and I pre-composed these two shapes together. And then I just tracked that right onto my eyeball, and I used a blend mode, and it worked perfectly to make my eye kind of fade in lighter. Next, it was time to work with the mouth. And I know for Bilbo, they added this very unnatural shape to his mouth that kind of brought us to this uncanny valley that makes it almost seem a little creepier. But rather than doing that, I wanted to see if I could create something that's equally as good or interesting using the, my own shape of my mouth without having to recreate a new mouth. So that's what I'm doing. So what I did is I really just rotoscoped around my mouth as it opens. Then I just added a duplicated layer below that I just used the Lumetri color on to kind of make it look like my teeth are dark and miscolored. And I added a ripple effect that just gives it this subtle look that my teeth are a little bit misshapen, a little bit uh, sharper. And then finally, I just wanted to give a little bit of this weird kind of almost broken skin, uh, sharp vein texture. And what I did there is I just duplicated the layer that had the miscolored skin around my eyes. I added a CC glass effect and then I just played with the settings until I kind of got this look. And that's all I decided to do for this effect, so here it is, bad acting and all. I hope you enjoy. Oh. My 
bouldering. Uh, I sh 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 very much like to hold it again. One last time. The next effect that I wanted to recreate was the perspective handoff, when Gandalf actually hands off his hat and his staff to Bilbo. This requires having a normal sized staff and hat for Ian McKellen playing Gandalf and an extra large replica of the hat and staff for Ian Holm who's playing Bilbo. I know that Gandalf is actually in front of a blue screen right now and that there are other people on set handing the staff and hat to Bilbo, but since it's just going to be me, I'm going to have to figure out my own way to go about this, which is fine. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the skills to actually create my own props, especially replica props in different sizes. So I went on Amazon and tried to find anything that was identical in two different sizes. And unfortunately, this wasn't easy. The only thing I was able to find was this mini pack of cards and a regular pack of cards. So I decided for this effect, I would have Gandalf and Frodo playing Go Fish. So I started off by gluing these tiny little fridge magnets to the cards. And then I started setting up these stands, which basically I just rigged up with some tape and some butter knives covered in green tape that I could key out later. And this is what I would stick the cards to. So after practicing it a few times, I got in my costumes and I played out the scene. So as Frodo, I stood in the back of the room on my knees. I handed the card up and attached it to the butter knife. Then I set up my next stand a lot closer to the camera with the mini card and tried to match the perspectives as perfectly as I could. Once I got that all set up, I took the back stand down and then played out the rest of the scene as Gandalf a lot closer to the camera. Then I got a clean plate so that I could clean it all up in post. In After Effects, I really just masked out all the stands. And then for the part where they actually trade cards, I just did a little bit of rotoscope work with the hands and the cards and then timed it up to make it look as seamless as I could. Now, because the room was so small and there was a little bit of shadows, it didn't work perfect, but to sell it a little better, I decided to use the roto brush around Frodo's cloak, and then I actually added in a guitar to the scene to make it look like he was at least in front of an object that was a little closer to camera. So without further ado, this is my recreation of the perspective handoff. Do you have any sevens? Uh, yes. Would this have been cooler with something other than playing cards? Yeah, probably, but I had fun making it. Now I at least have a better understanding of some of the techniques. The next and final effect I want to create is the ominous road. And I'm pretty sure all that's happening here is known as a dolly zoom. And a dolly zoom is essentially when you have your camera at a certain focal length on a subject, in this case, the road, and as the camera is moving either forward or backward, you're changing the focal length of the lens so that the subject is actually staying roughly in the same place. It creates a lot of really interesting parallax movement in the shot that can be used for various effect. And it has been used in cinema for years. I'm sure you've seen it in a lot of shows and movies. So I decided to head up into the mountains to find a good section of a trail that I could use to recreate this. Unfortunately, it started raining as soon as I got there, and once I got to the trail, it was still lightly raining. And instead of getting out my slider or something that I could use to stabilize the camera, I really only had time to try to do it handheld, which kind of worked out after using warp stabilizer in post, but this was the result. The shaking and wobbling from having to do it handheld in the camera really just didn't make a good result. So I decided when I was camping the following weekend that I would give it a try, so I brought my slider. So after a lot of practice, while moving the camera backwards, while trying to smoothly zoom the camera lens in, I was able to get a couple shots that I thought worked pretty well. So without further ado, and without a location that really fits quite as well as the one in the Fellowship of the Ring, here's my version of the ominous road. That's it everyone, thanks so much for watching as I attempted to recreate these effects from the Fellowship of the Ring. I hope you guys were entertained watching this, maybe you learned something, maybe inspired to actually try recreating some of your favorite effects from your movies as well. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, let me know if I was even remotely close to doing anything as cool as in the Fellowship of the Ring. 
Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll catch you in the next video.